In this video, we'll show you how easy it is to create a full image backup of your computer to any network location using Backup Assist System Protection. This will allow for a full recovery of your entire system in the case of system failure or the restore of individual files in the case of accidental deletion. So let's begin. In this example, we're backing up a Microsoft Hyper-V server to a network location, which is a QNAP NAS device. Should your computer be a physical Windows server or a desktop, it should work the same. Let's start by launching Backup Assist. You're presented with the home page. On the Backup tab, click Create a New Backup Job. Then click System Protection button to start the System Protection Wizard. This option will create an image of your system that can be used to perform a full recovery of your computer. If this is the first time you've created a job, you will be asked to provide a backup user. Why is that? That's because backup jobs, by their very nature, require a Windows user account with permission to read the data sources and full read-write access to the backup destination. Should your account not have sufficient permission, the backup job will not complete successfully. I've already got an account called Administrator set up, so I'll just fill it in. If you don't have a backup user and you're more interested to complete this setup process, select Use Your Local System Login, which just uses a built-in system account. Just bear in mind, it normally has restricted permissions levels, which could cause your backups to fail. Click the Next button to verify that your backup user identity works. Click the OK button to complete. Remember to select Critical Volumes because it is required for a bare metal backup. A bare metal backup can be used to recover your computer when your computer can no longer start itself. This could happen after hardware has been replaced or an operating system failure has occurred. There is also the option to backup other data volumes. If business applications such as SQL Server, Hyper-V Guests, and Exchange are present on your server, they will also show up here. We'll use the default and recommended full VSS mode and click Next. Click on the Network Location icon. It's important to select the Data Container option to enable all your backup history to be maintained so you're able to have multiple restore points to recover from. If not, you'll only get one restore point, which significantly limits your recovery options. Click the Next button. You will need to select the scheme that best fits your needs. For this video, we will be using a daily backup scheme that automatically runs the backup once a day from Monday to Friday. The default time is 10 p.m. You can change that here. If you want to change the days your backup runs, then you will need to edit the job after this wizard completes. Now that we've completed the backup schedule, let's proceed to set up your data container volume on the NAS. Click the Next button. A data container is a virtual hard disk image file that stores all your full and incremental backups that happen over time. This gives you the option of having multiple restore points to recover from. When setting up your data container, you need to specify both the server name of the NAS as well as the backup path where the data container should be created. In our case, the server name is called BAQNAP, and we've created a directory earlier called Backup. Since our NAS device is not a member of the domain, the backup user identity created earlier does not have access to the data container directory called Backup, so we'll use a different user to authenticate to the NAS device. The size setting for the data container can be changed using the up and down arrows in the Container Size field. In this example, we'll let our data container use all available space on our NAS, which is up to 2 terabytes for a Windows Server 2008 and up to 64 terabytes for Windows Server 2012 and 2016. Remember that once a data container is created, the size settings cannot be changed. Selecting Check Destination button will create and test mount our data container. By default, Use All Available Space for Backup History is selected. This is a recommended setting. 
Should you wish to change the size of the data container after finishing this wizard, you could delete the data container file on the NAS and perform check destination to recreate it. When check destination is successful, click Next to complete your data container setup. Give the job a meaningful name. Verify the settings look correct. Crypto Safeguard is designed to toughen your backups against crypto-based ransomware. Should you wish to receive SMS notifications for potential ransomware alerts on your smartphone, visit the Configure option. Then click Next to finish setting up your backup job. The Recover Assist Builder creates a standalone bootable media that can be stored on a CD or a USB thumb drive. This CD or thumb drive helps you start the computer system when your computer can no longer start itself after a hardware or operating system failure. Once started, Recover Assist allows you to use your system protection backup and recover your computer to its last good state. You can launch it here or from the Recover tab on the left panel. For this video, we'll skip this step. Click Finish to complete. Congratulations on setting up your NAS backup job with Backup Assist. You have now successfully created your system protection backup to a NAS device. If you have any questions, please email support at backupassist.com or visit our online help portal. Thank you for watching this Backup Assist instructional video.